And now, coming to you live from the tri-state area and San Francisco, California, it's the best part of Wednesday, Waffle Box, with your hosts, Mike Fish and Kush Hayes. Ooh, welcome to Waffle Box, the podcast where we talk about anything, everything, and nothing, all at the same time. Coming up on episode 64, we have a world record. 64! We've got a world record this one. Hopping! We've got a barbarian movie review. We've got a fun places to find humans and much more. I am Mike Fish and I am joined as always by the main man from San Fran. It's Kush Hayes. Kush, how you doing, buddy? What is good, y'all? What's good, Mike Fish? How are you doing these days, my friend? You, uh, I feel like you have actually literally gone through like maybe something tragic. Uh, with yourself there like, uh, those 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 not living under a rock or maybe you are living under a rock uh, the queen of england died last week queen elizabeth uh, any second. thoughts on that you know the young lady uh, who's, who's literally been on your wall behind your head there there she is there she is old lizzie yeah, man, yeah. Like, let me tell you some at first i was just like well you know she was 96 great run um yeah i can't wait to see what happens next but other people like no this is like the first all my life i've only known this woman to be in charge and i have no idea what to expect uh so just what are you thinking yeah no it's it's, it's pretty pretty crazy um yeah i'm th- obviously i'm 37 i mentioned it seemed to mention it every every episode but yeah she's obviously the uh the only queen monarch that i've known and there are 70 year old people in this world who uh have the same experience um it's just it is it was a very weird i remember that when it happened um i i i just felt weird mm-hmm. i wasn't upset or anything okay. like that i just felt weird like an uneasy i don't know how to explain it and then yeah. I, I i sent a text to my buddy of mine who's you know grew up within england but now obviously lives stateside as well i texted him I was like hey how are you doing with the news and he said exactly the same thing he's like i don't know i just feel weird and, yeah. and i couldn't put my finger on it and then obviously i was watching a lot of the had a lot of the coverage on in the background and then someone was like kind of talking about it, it, it's like it, it's strange because it's as much as you know not to get too deep but obviously it's much, it, with, a bit, with any life there's always change and there's always uncertainty and things like that whereas obviously mm-hmm. the one constant in, in in the british man's life was is, was queen elizabeth and and in a weird way it's she's linked to all of our sense of identity in a weird way you know not this whether you liked her or not whenever people would hear my british accent they're like oh you're british do you know the queen but then they'd start talking about the queen whenever you think of britain the first thing you think about was queen elizabeth mm. so yeah it was it's very it, it did for a little while feel like like i'd lost a little bit of my britishness in a weird way it was very strange very strange for a couple of days um i, I don't know how i'm gonna obviously the the funerals next went next monday so mm-hmm. obviously i'll let that on you know you have to watch that pay me respects mm-hmm. but um yeah and now i have to learn lyrics to the the new lyrics to the national anthem oh that'd be a pain in the butt the new, the, oh are there new lyrics to the national anthem yeah it's, instead of god save the queen you now sing god save oh. the king oh well, yeah, that's, that's i'm sure you'll get it down i'm sure i'll manage it i'm sure you'll get it down yeah yeah, yeah. Um, without getting into details, positive or negative, did you like your queen? Uh, it's weird. It's not to say I didn't like her, but I didn't hate her. You know, she was, she was the okay. monarch. She was, she was uh, almost like a, you know, the poster child for Britain. She was the icon. So it wasn't necessarily mm-hmm. whether I had a like, love-hate relationship with her. But yeah, I I respected the idea of the monarchy in that it's it's great. I think it's great PR for the country. You know, she gets sent out, or the royal family gets sent out. Shake these people's mm-hmm. hands, kiss those babies, make us look good. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so that was kind of it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of fun. It's like because in a weird way, she didn't technically have any power left. But if you think about it, she kind of right. did because, for example, let's say she met the U.S. president, mm-hmm. and she just suddenly turned around and was like. Joseph, hop on one leg. You know everyone in that room is like, you better fucking hop on that one leg, Joe. Jesus Christ. 
So she had. She I would had, like to see him hop on one leg too. Yeah, so she, all right, she still has some weird quasi power, which is interesting. But yeah, she'll be. I think she'll be missed overall. Obviously, there's, there's some haters out there, mm-hmm. um, because of the obviously the history of the British Empire. But you know, mm-hmm. not to get too okay. deep into it. But you know, people not are to saying, get too oh, deep she, into it. she colonized. Blah, blah, blah. She didn't really colonize anyone. That was all before her time. If anything, she gave a lot of countries their independence from the British Empire. Mm. So, whatever yeah. but i'm not gonna yeah. i'm not here to convince anyone if you don't like it or you didn't like it whatever live your life yeah. so with the inevitable uh there's a king charles the third now um just just again positive negative or mm, we'll see uh any, what, what do you think of first thoughts on him now being in, under the crown like I say, it's, it's not like it's a, a new prime minister or a new president it's like I said, it's just a new person who's on the money and the stamps. They're not really going to change anything. They're not going to really do anything. It'll just be a different person doing the whole royal speech thing. And like I say, shaking hands and waving. So, okay. yeah, whatever. I don't care. I don't care. I, I, I thought, you know, it was never going to happen because he's been sitting there waiting to have his turn for years. So he was never going to turn it down. But I thought just for a good image wise, it would have been good to have the the younger king just pass it straight down to his son, but that was never going to happen. Uh, yeah, that's that. That's my uh, royal synopsis. How okay. you been? Right. How you been? I'm good. Yeah, just hanging out, man. Enjoying life. Enjoying my days off. Getting ready to go back to work for some more time. Happy days. Just to kind of give it... Yeah. So, so... For those who have been following us on social media at Warbox Pod, you may have seen that we've been promoting a live show on Sunday. Just mm-hmm. to give you a heads up, I I swear my more hair has fallen out of my head because me and Kush just wasted 35 minutes of our life testing it and it just, it didn't seem to work. So I'm going to hopefully, hopefully keep, keep an eye, keep a tabs on our social media. Hopefully it still goes ahead because I think it'd be a lot of fun. But, um, if I can't get the tech worked out, then it'll just be a regular episode next week, I guess. But we'll see. We'll see what we can. Do. That's a that's a fair that's a fair warning. It's a fair warning. I I have faith though, Mike Fish. You're gonna get us to that promised land, and we're gonna be streaming live for the Syrup Squad this Sunday, four p.m. So. Pacific time, seven p.m. Eastern time, six o'clock Central time, five o'clock Ooh. the other time zone that no one cares about, Mountain time. But I think it's still six o'clock. Whatever, whatever. Woosa, 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 and relax. But we will. We're happy now. It's Wednesday. It's Waffle Box time. Let's get into the show. Shall it's we? The best Should part we... of Wednesdays. Shall we get into the show? Let's get into the show. So obviously, so a little heads up. So obviously, how I normally work out a show, how I normally plan out the show is you know throughout the week i check on the news websites see if there's anything interesting and you quirky do. to talk about as we previously mentioned you won't be shocked to find out that pretty much the only thing being reported on was the death of queen elizabeth so it's it kind <laughs> of a struggle because i know we mentioned it we spoke about it a little bit but you know we're trying to be light-hearted we're trying to be funny not really much you can uh not much comedy you can squeeze out of a 96 year old woman's death. So <laughs> sometimes what I do is if I find a couple of stories, I'll bookmark them. And then at the end of the week, when I'm coming up with the stories, you know, I come up with the best. So it's, every now and again, I have some saved behind. So these stories I'm going to be talking about now aren't current affairs. They might be a couple of weeks, a couple of months old, but whatever. But we'll talk about the archives. And we've got a show together. So these first, these stories revolve around the theme of interesting places to find humans. And the first story, (coughs) clear my throat, comes to us from Greater Manchester in the UK, where a man who's from, so I thought when I was reading this. Name Chester? No, it's from, he's actually from Scotland. I thought it was a typo. I thought, oh, he's from Scotland. But no, apparently Spotland is a is a place in England. Um, Joshua Hobson, his name is. So he not only the swine stole a car, but 
then he was like, oh, I need, I need some gas. So he went to a gas station, filled it up, and thought, in for a penny, in for a pound. I've always stole the car. Why should I pay for this gas? And so he fucks off about paying for the gas. You know, he's going to argue with that logic. Yeah. That'd be weird when it's stealing a car and then paying 20 bucks for gas or 20 pounds. Although it's also amazing just coming from a, a San Francisco perspective where someone found a gas station that you could fill up first and then attempt to make a payment for it's it's no it's you you put that credit card in now mister or, or you tell me you, you bought 20 bucks on one Where well the, here's how it works so in england a lot of the petrol stations as they call them over in england mm-hmm. is so you'll go you'll go to the pump because and then you pump your own gas pump pump mm-hmm. pump, pump 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 and then ding, you have ding, to go ding. into the establishment go to the checker and say oh pump number three and then you pay for your gas. Mm-hmm. So it is pretty yeah. easy to drop. Obviously, there's security cameras, so they'll probably find you eventually. But mm-hmm. it's pretty easy to walk off with it. Now, that's the case in this one. They saw the license plate, followed the car, found out it was stolen, followed it, followed it, followed it, went to this man's residence in Rochdale. But when they were looking in their house, Kush Hayes, they couldn't find the young man. And they were like, we're sure he's here. We've got all the information. He's here somewhere. And then all of a sudden, whilst they were doing their investigation, one of the officers spotted a giant teddy bear that seemed to be breathing heavily. (laughs) To which they shoved it over Cut it open, and and there was a giant hole in the bottom of this stuffed teddy bear, to which Brilliant. Joshua Hobson was found. I mean, that's pretty. I mean, they he, he got caught, but that's of hiding places. I, that's a pretty good one. I mean, if I was cops and I saw a giant teddy bear, I, the first thing I would do is poke it with a stick. But it's like, like I, ow. I like the fact that that's yeah, I like that that's there. I like the guy took some initiative and was like, well. Oh. I was going to hide in the teddy bear here. I can't hide in the couch. I mean, how ridiculous would that be? But in wonderfully British style, uh, the Greater Manchester Police posted a picture of the stuffed bear on Facebook with the caption, he's now stuffed behind bars after being sentenced last week for theft of a motor vehicle, driving whilst disqualified, and making off from a petrol gas station without payment. Hopefully, he has a bearable time inside. Oh! That I appreciate is all adorable. That. I appreciate all of that. What a, what a guy. What a guy. Right. This, this takes us back to a lighter time when we could actually make fun of some crimes, some just harmless crimes. Oh, what this guy do? He, he stole a car and then stole some gasoline and then he was promptly arrested and no one was hurt, right? Like, it feels good to like talk about crime <laughs> that we can just laugh about. <laughs> the next story uh, involving a human in an interesting place comes to us from New Zealand. Ooh. So, oh. have you ever seen the show um, Storage Hunters? Storage, well, storage Hunters, Wars. No. I think the Storage Hunters storage might be the Wars, British. yes. I've seen okay. a few. Storage oh, Hunters might be okay. the UK version, maybe. But yeah, Storage Wars, where it's hilarious. So all of these giant Americans who are fantastic characters get dragged around the storage unit and then they go, yeah, how right, much? Body. And then they quickly open the door and you see, oh, what's inside? And then you get like some, some fat guy going, yep, yep, I want it, yep. And then all of a sudden, randomly, there's some yep. fucking cowboy in Dave the background. Hester. Uh-huh, yeah, howdy. And, it's, it's always, and then maybe that's like a clown with a squeaky <laughs> nose. <laughs> that means he wants to bid on it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's a very strange show. But it's great. It's, it's in my. It's in the same kind of category of like those kind of shows, like um, like Bar Rescue, where like these, okay. these, yeah, guilty these shows, pleasures. These shows are horrible, but I can't stop watching them. <laughs> so this... I had to stop watching Bar War or Storage Wars when like 
I, I caught on real quick, like the, these projections they're posting at the end of the show, like these are just estimates and we have no idea how much they, these things actually sold for. They could have sold for more. They could have sold for less. But what took the cake is um, the one, the one token sleazy guy, like he found a set of drums and he's like, these just aren't like a regular set of drums. These, these drums are special. I don't know what it is about it, but I know a guy who does. And he got the drummer from, was it Springsteen or the police? Regardless, this guy knows his fucking drums. He's like, this drum set you got here, my guy, is from an Earth, Wind, and Fire tour in like 1972. How do you like, know oh. that just by looking at it? He knows his drums, dude. He like he's whatever he saw, he saw and was able to identify it as such. And uh he's like, Well, how much do you think they're worth? And we'll just say two thousand dollars. It's a nice round number. He's like, Well, fuck that. We're gonna triple the price. You're gonna autograph these drums for a band that you weren't in for a concert you weren't a part of, and now it's eight thousand dollars. Pa. And that's how the show ended. And they they chalked it up to that and gave him the quote unquote win of the week. And I was like, this is some bullshit. And I haven't really watched since, I'm sorry to say. But it was a fun show. That was again Dave who Hester. Would, who would pay it? like or who's that guy? The, um, there was one guy on it used to all he used to do whenever he wanted to bid, he'd just go, Money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, well, that'd be a oh, weird uh, thing to have in your collection, wouldn't it? Just go around. Oh, you see this drum kit? Uh, yep, this drum kit used to be used by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, yes. Oh, that's pretty cool. Who's Whose autograph is that? The guy from the police? Oh, okay. That'd be like having a like a baseball bat autographed right. by Cristiano Ronaldo. It's like, oh, it's I mean, like having cool, Jerry Seinfeld autograph Michael Jordan's autobiography. Yeah. It, it's just out of place. It's like, why? Okay. Anyway, so this uh, family, a family went to a storage unit in New Zealand, and similar. I don't think it was televised, but those kind of things that happen in storage wars actually really happy happen when mm-hmm. someone doesn't pick up their stuff for a long time. Whatever, they just auction it off to clear it out. Yep, so yep. this family purchased everything that was in this locker and some of them were suitcases in this storage unit. I don't like where this is going. So they took everything home and was like, "Mm, let's have a look at what we've got. Huh. This one suitcase is a little heavy. It's a little smelly too. I imagine so, because when they opened up, <laughs> they found human remains in the suitcase. Like, I wonder why could hold that, anything. I wonder why that person never went to return to that storage locker to get this suitcase. Uh, What's crazy is when you mention suitcases, I went, there's bodies in there. Like, like it should have been, you know, the, the, the first record on vinyl or it should have been like a copy of the Independence uh, Declaration of Independence or Crown Jewels or or just some dirty ass clothes. But no, it was a human body or parts, human body parts. But apparently the police have said the, the, they've now launched a homicide investigation and trying to in- yeah. identify the remains. The family is believed not to have been involved in the incident. But this is a, you know, it's a lesson for everyone. If you do go to one of these abandoned storage units and to bid for it, if you see just like storage crates or suitcases, just be like, nope, don't want them. Don't want them. Just buy everything at face value. Don't, nothing that can be hidden. Fuck that. Or so smell like it. Smell it first. Those, before you exchange those lockers money. go on sale after like 60 days without payment from its original owners, man. Um, and then three days before they go on sale, they they slap a padlock on it. So I have to wonder, like, how fresh are those suitcases? Because, like, again, like there there should be a very very distinct smell. Even if you've never smelled death before, you should be like, something's not right with this suitcase here, and I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe we should open it up here. Like, unless the breeze in New Zealand is just that good, and and all these smells of warm vanilla sugar, like. They should have. They should have sensed this before they left the lot. Yeah. Okay. Lots yeah. That'll be uh. That'll be two thousand New Zealand 
buckaroos or whatever they called the gallery dues. Gallery dues. Uh, yeah. Uh, before, just before I hand over the mic, can I? Is anyone else smelling this? Like, can can we check this first? Mm-hmm. Oh no, it's, it's probably just uh, it's it's it's, it's, it's old leather. That's what old leather smells like. Do you know? Do you not know that? Oh, okay. Off I go. Do, 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 do. Yeah, no, even after the two thousand dollars has passed hands, like um, I'm a I'm a, I'm a thousand percent sure I'd I'd put the stake the reputation of the waffle box and the serve squad on this Mike Fish, but like if you don't leave the lot and you like call the manager, like hey, remember this storage locker I just bought twenty minutes ago? Can I get a refund, please? Guess what? <laughs> we might need to call an ambulance too. By the way. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Can I can I actually get a refund? Why? No reason. Just uh, yeah. just, just oh no, I got plenty of reasons. I, I got a, There's a fucking big... dead body inside. I got questions. I got questions, my fish. Something and unfortunately, rotten. I don't think I'm gonna have answers. No, no. That's, by the way, that is crazy fucking story, dude. If anyone's watching the video version of this, I know he's had this on for a while, but appreciate the chain that Cushes is wearing right now. To show some love. Oh, what this old thing? Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I think you was wearing you wore you wore it last episode, right? You wore it last week. Mm-hmm. But you haven't been what you haven't been wearing that the whole sixty four episodes, right? I'm not that. No, no. Uh, okay. uh, I I meant to find a chain sixty three episodes ago, like even something stupid, like just like a pot leaf, and I could just never get it done. So finally found found a chain that I, I could get my name on, and uh, yeah. Got your face on it instead. Yeah, man. Why not? Why not? Sometimes you got to treat yourself. Treat mm. yourself. I feel really good about this. I feel like there's more, there's more medallions in our future, Mike Fish. Yours oh, and yeah. mine. Oh yeah, it's got to get the waffle box logo on. on. It looks sick. It looks sick. All right, let's move on, shall we? Because we've got some uh, exciting dumb world records to talk about in this week's dumb world record of the week. Why? Why? Why would I? Why? 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 Why would you want to do that? Uh, what's wrong, Kush? What happened? So before you begin, my fish, I just want to say kudos to you because last week's dumb world record, I'm only now hearing uh, on a few few other podcasts that I listen to. So kudos to you for scooping some some more successful names than us. But uh, that that did happen. The story of a man who busted sixty four baseball bats with one chop. Uh, one, yeah, that story. That story has been making the rounds uh, only after we dropped it. We're trendsetters. That's what I'm saying. So it's not the first time we've done that, but again, I, I'd like to just let you know it happened. Kudos well, to you. Pretty soon, then you'll be hearing about this bad boy. So we've down. got our returning champion, the legend. That is David Rush, who has broken. Over on around 250 Guinness World Records. Um, he does it all in aid of promoting STEM education. So he does it for a good cause. I'm still not 100 sure how doing these world records is raising awareness for the cherry, but whatever. Who am I to ask? Who am I to ask? Mm-hmm. question this man's faith? So this week's his world record was, as it says here, unusual and messy. As he he broke the world record for most water balloons popped using his armpits in one minute. Okay, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how this guy's coming up with this shit. But like, cool. Like what? Like I'm exhausted already. I think I've done this less than a dozen times. There now, it's been a dozen. Like, Who like? Because, I mean, everyone's surely at some point in their life, if someone has had a held a water balloon and thrown it, right? That's that's a mm-hmm. general thing, right? Mm-hmm. And also, I'm pretty sure everyone's had that really embarrassing situation where you get the water bottle and you go, ha, ah! and you throw the water bottle and then it just 
bounces off its victim and doesn't burst. <laughs> a water bottle? Are you throwing water? What a balloon! You know what I'm. You know, oh, okay. About. I just want to see Mike Fish just chucking Launching. metal water bottles at people. <laughs> Recycle! Ah! Bang! Bang! Uh, yeah. Just so, just popping under his armpit is pretty impressive. Unless he put like a, you know, a pin there. I don't know. But so this do we one, know how he's doing it? Like, is he able to hold it and go squash, or does someone hold it, or does oh, he I, have to like? I think he just play. I'm assuming he just play because if you squash it like in your armpit, that's kind of cheating because it's just using his armpit you know not on his armpit maybe i'm oh, so can being... he just be doing this shit the entire time I don't know, maybe uh, no because that's not that's no oh, yeah i'm i think surely to, to to claim that you are popping the water balloons with your armpit the mm-hmm. popping needs to be done by the squishing of the arm that's I, that's how i'm gonna say it but there is there mm-hmm. maybe there there is who who knows because there's more information on this, right? So here, this there needs to be more information on this because you're gonna have questions, yeah. Kush. I'm already, I'm already saying I, it. You're I, gonna have many questions. So he I have originally, many questions. He originally attempted the record in 2019, but his run of 25 balloons popped failed to beat the record of 16 because several were disqualified. For various violations of the guidelines, but it doesn't go into specific information about what, what guidelines? guidelines these violate. I want to know how did the water balloon violate a like, what? How long have these guidelines been in place, and who is the governing body that set them up? <laughs> exactly. Ah, they... no, I'm Steve Smith can't be their from the living the armpit popping water balloon council of North America. These are oh, the APPC? Yeah, uh, look, we all recognize the APPC here, sir. Please come in. Flips up in his wallet with a badge. Hey, APPC. Um, APPC. Armpit. Armpit popping coalition. There we go. Uh, so Rush said he decided his latest attempt might be more successful in a new position. So he tried it whilst hanging upside down. I don't know how, how that. I guess game so, changer. So if he was upside down, I guess did he use his like armpit as almost like a bowl, so he could rest the water bottle, the water balloon in the armpit, make it easier for popping. Maybe, maybe I don't know. I don't know. There's Wait. definitely a method to this man's madness, Mike. I think we yeah. owe it to ourselves and the Serb squad to find this man and bring him on the show. Just as I a, follow as him on guest. Twitter, but he didn't follow me back, so I'm I'll try he, reaching well, out to him. Well, just even send him a tweet like, hey man, <laughs> you up? Slide into those DMs. Uh, he quoted as saying, it still took multiple attempts and was nowhere near as easy as expected, but I broke the record by breaking 26 in my armpits in one minute. David Rush said. What a David guy. Rush. I couldn't, I doubt I could get three done in a minute. Like, just the whole thing feels flimsy feels feels like you need some coordination like he's he's definitely practiced this so i do feel i'm gonna have yeah. to start maybe like a, i've mentioned this idea before but we should do a, like a, a video series of five or one of us trying to break these world records i think that yeah fun. well i've always been pushing for getting video of the the world record in place some of these have them um but yeah dude we could absolutely i think we could do this over zoom yeah like i couldn't do this Except studio, I'm not, I'm not, but... I'm, I'm out. I'm not doing the baseball bat one. I can't. I'm pretty sure I can't crush one baseball bat with my fist, let alone however many. Look, 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 we get a couple of Sixers and yeah, and then we'll we'll talk later, okay? But well, but I could, yeah, I, I, I will, I'll, I'll attempt the water balloon one. I'll do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna hang upside down. That's craziness. That's craziness. You might have to hang upside down, man. That's that's how this went down. That's how this. This was performed. So, but also now we're in a position where we can actually like pull past clips of David, David Bell. Is that his name? David Rush. David Rush. David Rush. And yeah, his, we, we can pull his name. We can make a David name? Rush super compilation. Hollywood something. 
Is Hollywood, Hollywood so and so. Hollywood so and so. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. We'll try to get David Rush on the show. That'd be fun. Maybe for our David uh, Rush. If you know David Rush, seventieth, or would like to be David Rush, why don't you get in touch with the uh, yeah. Law. I, I'm sure most of our viewers don't even know what he looks like, so we could just get some random guy off the street. Hey, it's David. It's David Rush. Ah. Anyway. That's uh, that's that wraps up the first half of the show. What a great first half it was as well. My gosh, we talked water balloons, we talked dead bodies in a briefcase, we paid tributes to the Queen. We got so much done, but still, in the second half, of course, we have a trapdoor segment because she's gonna be reviewing a barbarian. We had to feel good story of the week, but we'll be right back after this break with the middle of the show quiz. Stay tuned, folks. Hey you! Yes you! Was you thinking of having that beer? But my friend, it's only 10am! Won't everyone judge you for drinking this early? Don't worry, we've got just a thing to help you. Your very own Waffle Box Mug! And now, everyone will just think you're drinking coffee, so you can enjoy your morning beer judgment free go to wafflemerch.com to get yours today it's now time for the middle of the show quiz hey welcome back to waffle box it's the middle of the show so of course it is time for the middle of the show quiz this week since kush is reviewing the movie the new film the moving picture that is barbarian of course that's what we do a barbarian themed quiz of course but this one's gonna go a little bit rogue this one's gonna go a little bit rogue i'll just warn your heads up heads up um as always is to introduce the segment if you've never watched or listened to an episode of waffle box this is the middle of the show thanks. quiz. I asked Kush. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for joining. In. Where you been? You're late, but whatever. Fashion to be late. That's what we appreciate about you. Come on in. Come on in. Take your shoes off, though. Take your shoes off, though. Um, new carpet. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna ask Kush five questions. Of course, the aim is to get best three out of five for the clean sweep. If he gets the question correct, he hears this noise. Which puts a smile on his face. However, if he gets the question wrong, he hears this noise. Which makes him sad. Nice and simple. Are you ready, Mr. Hayes? I'm ready. I have C's purpose. Okay. <clears throat> this barbarian quiz. Question number one. What decade was the character Conan the Barbarian created by Robert E. Howard? Which decade? I made it a little bit easier. Which decade? The 1960s. Wow, it was actually the 1930s. 1930s. Wow. I think it was 1930s. Okay. I, was, I was thinking it was the comic book, and you, you said, you, I think you said the book. Anyway, well, I was wrong. Still got time. You still got time to come back. It's all good. Be like the New York Giants. Make a comeback. All right. Question number two. What was the name of the 1984 sequel to the movie Conan the Barbarian? Starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Conan the Destroyer. Ooh, ain't no playing on that one. So, question number three. Bill Skarsgård hmm. in Barbarian, by the way. Here's my letter, sure. I think. He starred in Deadpool 2 as which Marvel Comics character? I don't know the exact name, but he it was just one of those little cameo gimmicks. And I just want to say cameo. he was I want to say he's the guy who, who vomited acid on people. Yeah. I don't know the name. I don't know the name. I don't know the name. Oh shit. Yeah, I don't know, know the name. There you go. Play both of those jingles. I'll give you a half point. He did vomit acid. His name was Zeitgeist. 
Zeitgeist? Okay. Yeah, yeah that scene was incredibly funny. I'm, I'm not a Deadpool fan. That shit was hilarious. Question number four! Another star of Barbarian, Justin Long. Made, well, huh. not technically his start in his acting career, but early on in his acting career, he starred in another horror movie in 2001. Can you tell me which horror Jeepers movie? Creepers. Ooh, straight in now, straight in now. Now this is where it gets yeah. where it gets tense now because you got a half point, first time ever, unprecedented. You are sitting at two point five points, so we could be very much on our way to the first ever middle of the show quiz draw. <laughs> oh my god! Self draw, fascinating. And I've, uh, since I know what the question is, I have a funny feeling that it's going to be a draw because I, I, I would be very impressed if you get the guess right. Because I was, I was struggling. I'll be honest. I was struggling to get quiz questions okay. for this one. Okay. okay. The question number five, Chris Hayes, on the Barbarian yeah. quiz. I'm here. How many hit points does the Barbarian class get at level one in Dungeons and Dragons? 15. Do you know what? I'm going to give you a half because it's 12, 12 <laughs> plus your constitution modifier. I have no idea what that means. So it could be three. I don't know. So let's go with 15. Well done. I'll give you that. Three and a half. Yeah. Congratulations, Gush Hayes, for passing. I've never played Dungeons and Dragons before in my life. That was Me wonderful. Me what a surprise. I was just like, well, just say a number. And since it's level one, it's probably a low number. <sighs> Who'd have thunk it? Well, we, we've educated people. I almost said 12, but I was like, that's too obvious. Always go with the obvious answer, Gush. That's I guess so. Hockham's Razor. Simplest answer is just the correct one. <sighs> all right let's move on next speech that was dramatic that was dramatic that was tense jesus christ I'm stressed. Yeah, that was a good one that was one of the better ones we've had oh thanks thanks very much i try i try i try um this week so that's uh, as, as i said we've, uh, we've had a stress i've had a stressful week now i've lost my queen i had a failed 35 minute test of uh, you know I've, i'm stressed so let's 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 vent. I can see the I can see the knots in those shoulders. Oh there, my probably. god! I'm definitely gonna have a, have a have a hot bath with some salts and shit and a candle. Hmm. Careful you for I, having I a bathtub you could fit in. I know. Jealous. Well, I, it's either I have to. I can either like lay in it and dip my shoulders in it, but my then my feet are out, or put my feet oh. in and I'm sitting. So it's not it's not great. Whatever, whatever. I have to re up because I, I used know. to have, I used to have a candle. It was like a a cannabis candle which is pretty nice but i use that so i have to buy that again but there you go i would say find a gym with a jacuzzi and a day pass there you go what is, I mean, yeah i'm not gonna give heads up i'm not gonna give names of any gyms because unless they want to sponsor us but there was a, there's a gym not close to me it's ten dollars a month i could i could do oh, that and just, yeah, just go there, there every day and just use you their could. jacuzzis yeah i mean that's why it's there that's why you pay your 10 bucks a month oh yeah but for the, just don't clean. set off the lunk alarm. Yeah, that's a good, 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 good piece of advice. Anyway, let's let's remove things from existence. No! In this week's trapdoor segment. Ah! Uh, again, introduction. Uh, so the trapdoor statement, this is how it works. I give Kush Hayes three to four different options from a singular category. And then together we decide which one deserves to be chopped and deleted from existence by sending it down the trapdoor. This week, we are talking... We're talking like chain stores, I guess, because I must admit, one of my biggest pet peeves is when the love of my life the better half the ball and chain often says to me do you want to go shopping with me which <laughs> which is always you know the way she words the question is fantastic because the she knows the answer the honest answer is no no i don't 
but obviously if she rephrased the question like can you go with me then obviously you know i'm a nice guy so i'm gonna say yes but don't ask me if i want to go no i don't it's not my to do list anyway so to help me out, makes you feel better she's bringing you as a safety button to talk her out of buying stuff you think you think yes no no no. she's always gonna put up a fight she's always gonna give you an argument for why i need this dancing flower (laughs) alternatively is also you know the whole like so we'll go to someone somewhere she'll buy a bunch of stuff i'll buy one thing but now because i bought one thing it's now our shopping cart and then i'll suddenly i'm paying for all of her shit that's how that (laughs) works it's also a trick it's yeah, oh, it's, a it's a big trick. It's a big trick. I don't like it. Yeah. Um, anyways, let's get rid of one. Let's get rid of one. So the four options. Get rid of one fucking thing. Our four options are Walmart, okay. Target, right. Costco, or Macy's. What was that third one? I'm sorry. Costco. Costco. Gotcha. I was going to say, you know what Costco is, right? You know Costco. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just didn't hear it correctly. Um, Or or Macy's. Macy's. Yeah, or Macy's. So Target, Walmart, Costco, or Macy's. Those are the four that we need to get rid of. There's too many. There's too many of these fucking stores. Um, What's what's your immediate thoughts? What's, what's your thought, Bruce? Jeremy, show you're working, Kush. So we don't have too many Walmarts out here in San oh, Francisco. Oh, you lucky bastards. Yeah. I mean, I've been in Walmart before and God damn, they got everything. It's amazing what they don't have, to be honest. And of course, the deals almost second to none, I guess. Almost, I don't know. I, I don't have, can't really walk across the street to the Target and compare and contrast. However, I was just at a Target today. I stocked up on a bunch of gifts for uh, Nephew Hayes, who was turning six in October. And you know what? You just go to that fucking bargain bin and you just, you get him twenty dollars worth of stuff, and he's in love with you already. Like it's just he just wants a bunch of shit. He he's not gonna play with any of them for more than ten minutes, and then he's gonna forget about them, and we'll move on to year seven. It'll be fantastic. Um, Macy's Macy's is the weird odd one out on this because like even Costco is the more you buy, the more you save. But Macy's is like the most like I go to buy a suit at Macy's. I go to get like a, a, a business shirt and a tie at Macy's. Um, they're uncomfortable as hell. And they don't have a size 14, but that's where you go get dress shoes at Macy's. Macy's is not where you're getting a case of cheddar puffs. Right. Macy's is not where you're getting gasoline for eight tenths of the price as opposed to nine tenths of the price. Uh, Costco, Macy's is not where you're getting your $5 blu-ray or dvd so i'm yeah, yeah, i'm for me, I'm, at this one i'm i'm all around as soon as i'm reading these out i'm kind of lean definitely the one i think for me is the savior one it should be costco because that rotisserie chicken for four dollars or whatever however much it is it's worth it it's worth it it's okay. genius so I, mean, I think See, Costco is clearly something a lot different than it was when I was going there as oh, a and, and a hot dog and a Pepsi for like one fifty. Mm-hmm. Ridiculousness, ridiculousness. <laughs> Again, these are these are all new things to me still. Like I've been going to Costco out here in California when it was called Price Club. And when it was Price Club, it was literally just like, here's all the newest TVs. The D the TV VCR combo. Ooh. blew my fucking mind and while my mom would go there to get like reams of paper and whatever new book for a fraction of the price and this and that and the other and I, and you know the the bundle of toilet paper that's bigger than the frame of this screen here um i would just hang out and look at all the tvs and, and like watch wrestling you know because it was it's saturday morning so they, they had saturday morning pro wrestling wwf old stuff all the jobbers and like you know Maybe the Macho Man would come out. Maybe Jake Snake would come out. So what about, what about was it Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling that TV show, the cartoon? Uh, that Remember was that? only for on for a year, and that was done well before we were ever going to Costco. But like we were literally just watching regular pro wrestling. Like I remember seeing Rey Mysterio Senior get demasked at a at a Price Club. Wow, that's some hot shit. That is. Even even at that young age, I was like, wow, that's weird that they would do that to him. 
But anyways, um, I think Memories we're just going to get rid of the Macy's. I think we're just getting rid of the Macy's because it's the one that doesn't belong out of those three. Those other three are kind of all the same. Costco specializes in some other different shit. Again, like gasoline and, and diamond jewelry for some reason. But anyway, um, yeah, Macy's. Ma- Macy's. Only, a confused answer, Macy's. Whatever, I don't care if you're confused. It's one less shopping trip I have to do. So thank you for your service, okay. cliches. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, the wife has never asked you to go to Costco for jewelry shopping. However, she can buy a pair of earrings there too, and it's that's that's very and strange. I, I, I feel like I need to buy thirty pairs of white socks in one packet. That's well, that's at Costco. You'll find that at Costco, hopefully. But no, I I I I, like I, said, I do like Costco because I like getting the, the rotisserie chicken. It's cheap and it tastes amazing. But the problem with Costco is that it's one of those, it's de- more so than the others for me, at least. It's one of those places where you go, ah, we'll just pop in, you know, because we don't like, uh, you know, I don't like going shopping. So the less I can do it, the better. So let's buy bulk. That makes sense. Yeah. So, right, okay, so. I'm, I'm going to buy two months supply of kitchen roll and toilet paper. I get myself chicken. That's it. That's all I need. And then, Next thing I know, I'm at the checkout. That's three hundred dollars, please. Fuck. Yeah, but it would have been seven hundred and ten dollars <laughs> anywhere yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. Costco's where I've always like. If you're gonna buy food there, it's dry food, dry goods. Again, like the tub of cheddar puffs that's bigger than the frame of this screen here. Like when you're telling me like you're buying rotisserie chicken there, like I imagine you're buying like six rotisserie chickens. No, for, like, no, it's just one twenty-five rotisserie- bucks. One for four dollars. One, yeah, and it's and hot off the buying rotisserie. perishables. Hot. Perishables I need to eat that minute at like a rotisserie chicken hot off the spit is yeah. not what comes to mind when I think about Costco. But that's that's apparently a thing. So good on you. One last thing before we let's give you a tip now. So before I don't know if they have it over in see it could be a regional. But I doubt it's a regional thing. I imagine it's Costco. It's Kirkland, by the way. Shout out. I will say Kirkland. Oh, Kirkland. I will give a free plug. They have their own beer now mm-hmm. costco beer um but it was even in the frozen section if you ever mm-hmm. go next time you go to costco do you, uh, you, do you like a do you like a lamb shank Kush, like a lamb shank can't say that i do no well fuck you then um <laughs> <laughs> well they do a nice lamb shank that you can just stick in mm-hmm. the, the oven for like 20 minutes and it comes out beautiful but whatever mm-hmm don't like it. I, I gotta say if, if my only choices at dinner time were lamb shanks or any seafood fish or a crustacean available i'd be like oh thank god we're having lamb shanks oh my god but, <laughs> Under uh, the not sea. my favorite Under the sea. Do, 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 mm-hmm. do. i'm surprised we weren't talking about the little mermaid this weekend but okay since you brought it up it's i don't like it i don't like it it's supposed to be live action, oh. right? And I get mm-hmm. it. I get it. Like the, the whole premise is the character is a mermaid, so obviously she can live like she can live underwater, right? That's that's how it works, mm-hmm. right? And apparently, you know, she can mm-hmm. sing. If you live, you can talk and sing underwater. But okay. physics should still take place. If this bitch is singing underwater, I need to see some little bubbles. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know what? That's a fair criticism and a fair critique of only what you've seen in a trailer. I know, but again, but that's 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 the best that's the best negative review I've seen of of this upcoming film so far. So kudos to you, Mike. But as the again. theme of this segment, this section of the show, I will end up no doubt watching it with the wife. So we'll see. We shall see. But speaking of movies. Uh, should we should we should we should we let Kush Hayes review a movie real quick? Why not? Let's do it. It's this week's Kush's movie review. Kush's movie review. Ah, it's epic. Barbarian. Boy, Barbarian. After- 
is a 2022 American horror film written and directed by Zach Krego. It stars George Campbell, Bill Scarsell, Justin Long. The film follows a young woman, finds out she's written double books with another man, discovers a dark secret in the house. Wikipedia. Bow. That's that's the research I did. <laughs> that's good research. Thanks. And doesn't that explain whatsoever why this film is called Barbarian? So when nope. we're doing our, our our middle of the show quiz tonight, it's it's very funny that everything goes about a barbarian. Um if you guys listened to Waffle Box or to the Microdose maybe four weeks ago, we had Drew Angelman on, Funniest Man in the Room, and we talked about the fourth quarter of 2022's films, and Barbarian came up. Barbarian is this weird film where I saw the poster in the hallway going into another film, and I went like, wow, that's a really interesting poster, and Barbarian, that's a strong title. I don't see what one has to do with the other in this poster, but you got my attention. Immediately, I would see a trailer for the same film in whatever film I was seeing at that moment. I went like, wow, I don't see any barbarians in that. But God damn, that looked like an interesting horror film that I would like to see. And then I saw Barbarian, again, directed by Zach Kreger, starring Georgina Campbell and Bill Skarsgård. It's rated R and is one hour and 42 minutes. And God damn it, Mike Fish, this movie is a fucking delight. And without knowing much about it, and without trying to give you guys any spoilers, this thing, like, it was fantastic. I'm on the edge of the, my seat most of the film. Um, there's it's there's three or four separate acts that could be their own stories entirely, but you put them together as a cohesive unit, and it just works. Um, I got questions. Again, why is it called Barbarian? I don't know. But then I got other questions, and I oh, don't Is that know. never, it like, addressed in a movie? No. Oh no! The the address is number 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 like Barbary Street. No, uh, I mean like is that, it is is it not addressed in the movie? Like is it not at some point where someone goes, "Oh my God, yeah, a barbarian!" Like is not even like no a throwback with the title. They never even mention at no point does the title of the film get said in <gasps> in the film. Yeah, yeah. What if the thing? So that was a good question. What if I've got I've just come up with something here in the brain box? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen the movie. I have. So you can answer this question. I will. Is so already through my Wikipedia research, um, the 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 main protagonist, I guess, is a woman, right? She is. Georgina Campbell, starring. A very as. beautiful and lovely and and fine actress of a woman. Do we ever learn? of her profession yes is she a barber who also works at a library no barbarian. but i like that you stre I, dude i hope that you fucking did some stretches before you made that reach because that was fantastic it's it's better than any answer i have because i got no clue for why we're calling this barbarian but uh, yeah, dude, this this point, this though. was a fantastic film. It's a fantastic surprise. This is usually one of those films that comes out the last week of August. We got to see it in the second week of September, so I'm 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 happy with it. Regardless, again, it's just nice to know that like to see a trailer where you're still not sure what the movie is about, but it's intrigued you that much that you need to see it. And once you do see it, you are not disappointed despite having no expectations. The first act is all just awkwardness and uncertainty. And because we know Bill Skarsgård from Stephen King's It and, you know, probably a couple other creepy, fantastic feature films he's made, you know, like, like this guy's going to fuck her over. Like, That's so creepy. This is a trap. This is like he, he sent her. And does he? I'm not going to tell you, but tension is always there and you're relieved when he doesn't and when things go bad you're sorely just you're hurt you're, you're like damn i wish that didn't happen um and then as you mentioned justin long comes in and it becomes a completely different movie entirely and that's that's pretty much all i want to say about barbarian it's a 20th century fox release which means it's a disney film so it'll probably be on hulu in four or five weeks but um or dp or what uh no this is not going on disney plus at all ever why is it too is ever. it too raunchy 
Well, it's a, it's definitely a hard R. The the body count is very few and far between, but it is there. There's a lot of disturbing images in this when they make themselves present, and you're just it's a ride, dude. Uh, I might want to go see this in the theater one more time, but what? this this might Double be take. the best horror film of the world of of 2022, and I'm giving it a five out of five. Five out of five. My gosh. Five out of five. What a movie. Yeah. What a yeah. movie. This was fantastic, dude. Like, well, I, I'm only just, I wish I could watch this again for the first time. And I'm only disappointed that next week's selection will be Clerks 3, which, you know what? I hope is a good movie. <laughs> I'm I, probably, probably not. Probably not. You never know. You never know. Hmm. Best case got- scenario, we give Clerks 3 a 5 out of 5. Like, I still love that first Clerks movie, dude. That thing was very relevant for a young Cush Hayes in 1995, who, guess what, was a clerk at a grocery store. No. Like, that thing went one for one uh, you know, on, the, on the model scale. Like, everything in that was pretty legit, with the exception of getting shot at the end of the ship. And we never played hockey on the roof. Other than that, but other than that, real spot on, spot on. It was like Kevin Smith was narrating my life. What a life to lead. Uh, okay, there you go. Barbarian, Barbarian people, five, five out, out of five. Cushes approved. Check it out. Go it see is. Barbarian now. It was number one this weekend. It probably will not be in theaters much longer. It's it's literally you saw it or you don't care about it. Guys, go out of your way to see this. I don't want to give out any more spoilers. Yeah, I dare you to not like this movie. Wow. Dare you. Dare you. Um, get out, get out, keep out, keep. Right, before we wrap up this week's what Box, we have feel good story of the week, as we always do. Let's get some plugs going. Um, obviously. As I said at the beginning of the show, keep an eye on the social medias at Wafflebox Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll be doing a special live recording of the podcast over on our YouTube page. If you don't know where our YouTube 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 page is, just go to live l i v e dot enjoywafflebox.com and it'll take you straight to the YouTube page. Hit that, smash that subscribe button, um, and you'll be notified if and when we go live. Worst case scenario, just be notified when a new episode gets uploaded, but whatever. Do it, do it, do it. Uh, because hey, leader of the Bosnet family, one of the good folks got to look forward to and content wise there. Yo, this weekend we're dropping microdose number 133, and we're talking to one of the stars of the new feature film, Nova which will be available on all streaming platforms for a price uh, undisclosed at this time. Um, Nova, and it, we are talking to Cy Pena. It's, he, he's a really good dude. He's a lot of fun to talk to. He's uh, very knowledgeable, and he's one of those guys that like just took off running. So go, go check that out. Otherwise, in two weeks, or at least on September 30th, I have been invited to be a part of the Where Nobody Knows Your Name podcast. Where me and a bunch of bunch of nice dudes from the UK, we're going to be talking about the pilot episode of Cheers, Mike Fish, celebrating its 40th anniversary, and uh, it's it was a very fun episode. I was happy to be a part of it. I hope all of you guys will listen to it, whether you're fans of Cheers or not. Heck, you know, be a fan of Cheers. It's a classic. It's a classic. Um, but yes, Mark Dose episode 133 coming out this week. Um, if you haven't already, do uh, make sure you check out Microdose episode 132 because it's a cracker. It's a legendary Ooh. episode. Might be the best. If you love your ever. waffle box, it's 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 pretty good as far as our waffle box spinoffs go. Yeah, man. We talk about a lot of fun stuff at the time. And I was probably a little bit inebriated at the time as well. So that's fine. It's fine. Oh, it's fine. Well, we did it right after a waffle box. Yes, so you were definitely inebriated. Definitely, 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 definitely. I know yeah, I check was. It out. Go to yes, yes, yes. All right, then there you go. Listen to the one night one thirty two. We were both pre uh any break. That's what's fun about it. We had a good time. And we you did guys have a good time, time too. Listen to Waffle Box one thirty two and everything else 
Mike Fish has been a part of on the the Microdose channel. All right, guys, he's been on there like a handful of times now, oh. including we're talking about Super Bowl predictions. We talk about all sorts of wild shit. I think we've done two. Is it two Super Bowl shows? We've done two, and I'm going to definitely book you for the third. Why not? I'm a draw. Hmm. Oh, hopefully your man from Claret and Big Blue can join us, Alex uh, so-and-so. Middleton. And, um, Who just got married this past weekend. Congratulations to my man, Mr. Middleton, for getting married. Congratulations, Middleton. Congratulations. Good times. All right. Let's wrap this shit up. Let's end the night, as we always do, with giving the woman fuzzies inside. It's this week's Spill Good Story of the Week. That's the coolest fucking story I've ever heard in my entire life. That's insane. Can I hear it again? This week's story that's going to make you feel all warm inside comes to us from, of all places, New York City. Who would have done Big it? Apple. The city's so nice, they named it twice. Where everyone is fucking miserable. Um, Mm. Me included. Uh, So this story Mm. involves an Uber driver. An Uber! A feel-good story starring an Uber driver in New York City. What is going on? There's something wrong with the Matrix. Um, So this Uber driver is being held as a hero because Mm. And here's why. So his name is Fritz Sam was his name. And he was taking a passenger to New York's LaGuardia Airport. She's it's a horrible airport. Um, on Wednesday, last Wednesday, when he noticed a commotion on the street in Brooklyn's Bed-Stuy neighborhood. That's when he noticed the flames and dark smoke coming out the second floor window of a brownstone. So he asked, he then says, hey, I asked my passenger, can I pull over? And uh, maybe we can help. So him and his passenger got out of the car. He just bolts into this building and wow. starts checking every floor, every place. And he ends up helping several people out of this brownstone, saving their lives. Right. And then. Right. Right. And then he gets back into the Uber with his passenger, uh, Jemima Way. Um, And the first thing he said was, oh, do I smell like smoke? I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, so he he was in a ride share as well? Or he just brought someone from the brownstone? Jemima was in the Uber on her way to the airport when the driver stopped the car, got out. Oh, the driver stopped. Saved some people's lives, then got back in and apologized to the passenger for smelling like smoke. And she was, they were like, dude, seriously, it's fine. You just saved people's lives. And then he continued the Uber ride and got her to the airport on time. What a legend. This guy is amazing. No, I'm I'm, I'm legitimately smiling here because that's a wonderful story. Good. I love the fact that he just kind of literally just jumped out, casually saved some people's lives, got back in. Was like, anyway, as I was saying, gas prices (laughs) these days, huh? (laughs) Like it was nothing. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's that is definitely. You know, we do the feel good story every week on the Waffle Box, and I enjoy them all. But this is, I think, this might be the best one. I did like it when I saw it. I'm not going to bring it down, but yeah, it was Uber. Uber, the Uber CEO, uh, apparently gave him gave him a phone call, and uh, people are trying to get him, you know, prize. Gave him more than a phone call. Shit. Yeah, hopefully they give him some kind of uh, like a, a, a funky new car, like saying no, no, or something. I don't know. But yeah, what a guy. Fritz Sam, the man with two first names. How can you go wrong like Ricky Bobby? Cheers to you. Clink, clink. Yeah, man. But that wraps up another episode of Waffle Box. Thank you for watching. 
Thank you for listening. As I was always. Thank you, Fritz to... Sam. Thank you, Fritz Sam. Legend. David Rush. Hopefully you'll be on the show soon. As always, go to enjoywaffbox.com to get all the links that you need to be doing. If you are listening to this show and you would like to watch us instead, like you're a sneaky little voyeur, we don't judge. Uh, you can get all the live, the links to the YouTube page. And if you are watching us on our YouTube page and instead you're like, Jesus Christ, I'll just stick to listening to these. You can go all the Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, and all that good shit there as well. Enjoy it. Wafflebox.com is where you need to be. But until next week, I have been Mike Fish. Well, this guy has been Kush Hayes. Hayes. Always remember to take care of yourselves and each other. That's all, folks.